But if you say Jesus meant by as your will, yeah, then the question arises, was it the Father's will to accept Jesus' prayer? No, you're not. You said, let thy will be done. Okay, okay. So when he was asking, he has the principle said, by the which for him, come off the cross. Okay, yeah, okay. But the Father's will was, for this purpose he came, be crucified. Okay. So he would be defying the Father by not being crucified. So the question is, was it the Father's will to accept Jesus' prayer? That's the question, yeah? <laughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 7 that says text? that the Father that accepted, accepted Jesus' prayer. Everyone here, there's more people here. Okay. Okay, sorry. The question was. The question was. No, the prayer of Jesus was to be saved for himself. I'll just read the text. Let me read the text. Then Jesus came with them to a place. Uh, I'll read the actual verse. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My Father, if it is possible, let this call pass for me, yet not as I will, but as you will. So the bit that you don't seem to get is, he says, if it is possible, then the way to get it, nevertheless, however, is a bridge. Okay. A bridge between two ideologies, okay. shall we say. This type of question is neurological. Okay. So then he said, nevertheless, okay. let it be your will, not okay. mine. So, hold on. so then his prayer was answered. Because he said, his prayer was answered. So accepted. But all his prayer was, let it be your will, let it be your will, not mine. So the Father's will was that he, Jesus would be crucified for you and for everybody else on this earth. So his will, he said, what? So, so whenever anybody's talking to you and they say a whole heap of stuff, as soon as they hear the word what, and you start to listen carefully, you negate what's said before the what, because the what is a bridge. Okay. And nevertheless, is a bridge. So his prayer was answered. Okay. It was answered. So when you make that statement that it wasn't, then why was it crucified? Okay. That tells me, okay. and even as I'm speaking, you're not listening because you're, you're I'm listening to you, but you have to give me time to respond. You're eager to speak to me while I'm speaking. That tells me you're not listening. I'm yeah, listening, but you're listening. So what I'm saying is the prayer is okay. very clear. Okay. Very clear. Okay. The prayer was okay. answered. Okay. Right. Now, now my turn. Yeah. If my son says to me, I'll answer me. You've given a statement. You've statement to me. If my son says to me, oh my father, buy me a TV set, but yet it is your will. So my son wants the TV set, but it's my will at the end of the day because I'm his father. I'm in higher authority. Agree? You agree? What Jesus did was a payment. Why don't you answer? Do you agree? If my son says to me, oh my father, I would like to buy a PlayStation, but not my will, your will. It's up to you whether you want to buy me the PlayStation. So it comes down to my will, whether he gets the PlayStation or not. My son still wants the PlayStation. So in this prayer, Jesus wants to be saved from the cross. Yet he said, it's not up to me. It's up to you, Father. Your will, not my will. Now the question remains, what is the Father's will? That's the question. Number Point number one, Jesus says in John chapter 11, there's other people here. This is speaker's corner, my friend. You want to speak personally, we jump on stage. Okay. John chapter 11, Jesus says, the Father always accepts my prayers. If this statement is true, because Jesus prayed to be saved from the cross, even though it's the wills of the Father, the Father always accepts the prayers of Jesus. So then there's no crucifixion. Moreover, Hebrews chapter 5, verse number 7, says the Father accepted the prayers of Jesus, and the prayer of Jesus was what? Save me from the cross. Help me a bit here. Help me a bit here. I'm very clear when I hear that scripture that Jesus says, Yes, I don't want to die. But then he said, Wouldn't let it be your will? So that's. So, so the question is, What was the Father's will? But what I don't understand about you don't get because that's exactly something that you don't say. So, so let's use the analogy of your father, the father and the son, by the same I'm your son, you're my dad. 
You should know it by heart, you're filled with the Holy Spirit. No, because you've said it. Hebrews 5, verse number 7. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was hurt because of his reverence. And what does Eli say? No, Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. What's that got to do with his prayer being answered? <laughs> he learned obedience for. So you're saying his prayer weren't answered? No, you've just read it. You said in the days when he was the son, okay? He had to petition to his father. But he said that though he was the son, though he was God himself, he learned obedience from the things he suffered. Okay, what that means, you have a choice. As everything can come from a certain family, okay? But you have a choice. You either stay a Muslim or you move to another city. You have made that choice to remain a Muslim, okay? What God is saying as well, you have your choice. Jesus had a choice. He could either obey God. Or as God, he could come down the cross. But okay. because he submitted okay. under his father, he chose to stay with him. Right. So, so was his prayer heard or not? Yes. You've answered it. Yes, yeah, his so answer, his prayer was he accepted. He, he prayed to, to be saved on the cross. Listen, and it says he, he, he was saved. He had to suffer suffering the cross is not suffering. Because obedience, obedience. Yeah, what has, has Suffering. Prayer, Jesus suffered in his mission. Cross. Nowhere does it say he suffered because of the crucifixion. Hebrews 5 7 says that his prayer to be saved from the crucifixion was accepted. What, what does it continue after his prayer? Hold on, hold on. Do you really just said this? Hold on. Just make sure you hear you. You're saying that his prayer, Jesus' prayer, was accepted to be saved. Okay, where did you get that from? Okay, simple. Logic. In here, I don't listen to man's thing. Where does it say that in there? Where does it say in there? Like, where was that? The logic is Jesus said, logic. Listen, one second. Well, we came at place together no, no, because no, we need. Excuse me. Go on. My question is very clear. Okay. 
Where does it say? All right. Whoops, you, where does it say in the Bible that Jesus, this prayer, was answered not to be crucified? Okay. In the, Matthew 26. Just, one second. In Matthew 26. What did Jesus mean when he said, "Let this cup pass from me"? I'm asking you the question. I'm asking the question. Yeah, but I'm answering. So it's not a question. Matthew 26, verse 39. Jesus said to the Father, let this cup pass for me. You go to any biblical commentary, they'll admit that in context, Jesus was praying to be saved from the crucifixion. That's what, yeah, you accepted that? So if this is telling you his prayer was accepted, then it's obvious why his prayer was. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's a bit like... Right, let me read the text. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverence his prayer was accepted save to save from death what does that mean to be saved from dying what does it mean usually now if you're sitting on the tv okay you want to be the father that's what you said anyway right now i'm joking so so now i'm saying to you father remember me a tv jesus no one, no one, okay. Father, that's one. Father, buy me a TV. This is where you're stuck in. You're just assuming that Jesus says, Father, save me from crucifixion. Bang, you put a full stop right there. No, 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 don't miss no, 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 I'll trust the next part as well. You put a full stop there and you make it the rest of the request. I think that's unfair because I'll trust the next part. That's why I'm holding on to you. But can you? You negated the rest of the request from Jesus, okay. which he says, and I explained it to you very clearly. I and I responded very very clearly, I thought, is that your son wants a TV, but then your son says, no, wait a minute, my dad's more wise than I am, I'm going to leave him identify as a TV and need or want. You as my father, I'm trusting you. Where's that in the text like you asked me? See? See the double standards? For me, where's it in the text but just now? You heard that? Okay, I'm going to let it go. You mean you're running off? I'm easy go. You mean you're running off? Where am I running? 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 You just said something to me and you've done it yourself. Be consistent. You shall know the truth. Okay, carry on. You shall set you free. I'm using that as well. You, you, you. I mean, you did what you told me not to do. And you claimed I did. You put stuff in the text. You go in the TV and the soul. No, but then you had this stuff in the text and you were telling me not to. Carry on. No, you had your own help. What I keep on saying to you is that. What do you mean you're Yes, Jesus. Says, I don't want to die in the universe, I'm scared. Yeah. So, so what was the prayer? He doesn't want to die in the cross. Well, yeah, yeah? It's a bit like there's a conversation in high power, me and you, and everybody's listening. I've told you 10 points, you, you've only told them what I said fine. You keep on missing you the fine. I haven't missed any part, I have just the second part. You know what I mean? No, you're not speaking with integrity. The Bible's very clear, it says, however, or but, whatever it is, nevertheless, let it be your will, not the man. It's all part of the same prayer. The comforter. Are you with me? And I explained to you, I can't say any other way. As soon as he said, nevertheless, forget about what he's just said. So when you're speaking to me now, if you're speaking for an hour, as soon as you hear the word of anger, as soon as I hear the word put from you, then I'm listening. Okay. Okay. But there's, some, there's something you're missing out, though. There's something you're missing out. Now let me break this down again. John chapter 11, when Jesus raised Lazarus, yeah, Jesus said to the Father, I know you accept my prayers always. That's point number one. Okay? Jesus said the Father always accepts his prayers. Matthew 26, Jesus prays to be saved from the cross. But yet, as a good Muslim, he was submitted to God. Just like my son says to me, uh, as a good as a good Jew, Muslim, as a son of God, you mean? Okay. I forget that. Let's not get sidetracked. It's only joke. But as a good servant of God, he submitted to God. Just like if my son says to me, Oh, my father, I want the TV, but it's your will. I submit to you. If you accept it, good. If you don't accept it, it's up to you. Is that clear? So the same way, Jesus. He prayed to the Father to be saved from the cross, but yet he said, not your will, not my will, but your will. So the same way my son says to me, I want the TV, 
But it's up to you, your will. That's the same way Jesus said, I want to be saved, but it's your will. Now, if it's the will of the Father, and Jesus says the Father always accepts my prayers, then the will of the Father is to accept Jesus' prayer that he wants to be saved. Because if the Father doesn't, then John chapter 11 is wrong. When Jesus said the Father always accepts my prayers, very simple. Very simple. Very simple.